What is going on, people, inside the internet machine? Welcome to episode 85, and you guys know how we do. I'm pretty excited. Uh, I haven't gone thrift stores or anything like that in like two weeks because I was out of town for a convention, and uh, I'm excited to be back in town. But like I said, you guys know how we do this. I'll show you some of the stuff that we got before we go out, some of the things I found or you know traded for or whatever. So you guys remember in a previous episode, we picked up some loose disc Saturn games. I'm actually hopefully going to be able to go back to that store tomorrow and anything that's not a sports game on the Sega Saturn, um, I'm going to buy. Now, I happen to like soccer, so we picked up uh, Worldwide Soccer for the Sega Saturn. There's the disc, but I picked up these uh, Wii cases, these empty Wii cases. You know, they were like 10 cents or whatever it is they were. And then went on the coverproject.net and you can actually print out uh, covers that people were nice enough to upload for uh, Sega Saturn games and again um, the cover project is amazing if you've ever used it they've got like US covers uh, PAL covers Japan covers uh, alternate covers custom made covers you know variant type covers and uh, it's just really cool and you can download all of it for free and then you just print it to size and cut it now I will say these Saturn uh, cases they were a little long so what I kind of had to do you can kind of see I had to cut it like super close uh, on the back side to get it to fit properly. But once we got it in there, it, uh, it fit fine. So there's Worldwide Soccer, Virtual Fighter 2. There's a disc in there, which is kind of nice. Now, again, they, they take up a little bit more space, but uh, I think they look a lot better on the shelf. So, yeah, I mean, they come out pretty good if you've got a decent quality printer. And uh, paper. I just use like regular paper stock. I do need to get these uh, stickers off of here. But I wanted to put this in here just to show you. But there's Daytona USA. They look great actually. Came out pretty good. I'm sure if you had a higher quality paper and printer, they would look even better. But took these. Throw them right up there with our Sega uh, Saturn games. The rest of them. They don't look as cool as the ones in the hard cases, but I think they I think they blend pretty well. I think they blend pretty well. Um, okay, so while I was out of town, we had some time off. We barely had some time off. I found a game store. I went up there. I actually found a really nice game uh, that you'll see in year of the PlayStation. But uh, saw this in their case. It was eight dollars. I was like, I have it, but I can't leave it. But it's uh, Death Smiles for the Xbox 360. And again, that was eight bucks, which is unbelievable. It's still like a twenty, twenty-two dollar game. But uh, the best part is that uh, it came with the manual. And um, although this isn't the right case, it was there's a soundtrack and then a game disc. This isn't the right uh, Xbox 360 case, but it's in there. And um, yeah, so there, there's the soundtrack, and there is the uh, game disc upside down. Like I said, which is cool. But I'm not sure. I got to do a little bit more research. But I'm not sure they released. Uh, a version with the soundtrack that wasn't a part of the collector's edition. So this might actually be a part of the collector's edition. So I'm going to jump on eBay and uh, do some research. And if it turns out that this is part of the collector's edition, then I might see if somebody's selling the box and the faceplate. It came with a special edition faceplate uh, to go with it. And we'll have a second copy of uh, Death Smiles Complete. So we'll trade that or sell it or whatever. So I thought that was pretty cool. You guys know I like my shoot 'em ups Unfortunately, Death Smiles isn't in my bracket. But, uh, all right, so if you guys follow my Facebook, you saw I posted this um, a while back is sort of you're seeing this. But uh, I found another box of retro toys in my basement. And uh, we'll just go through a couple. Most of them were like uh, mid-90s, early 90s uh, X-Men stuff, like X-Men Mutant Hall of Fame and the, the, the Deluxe Edition. I think I've got uh, Mr. Sinister, Gambit, and maybe like Rogue or something. But uh, I always liked this figure. This is from 1991. It's uh, Wolverine. Got his mask, which is upside down there. And then uh, I always kept my stuff real nice. But uh, you can see the sword right there. It comes, comes with a samurai sword. I always liked this figure. Maybe we'll find a place for him up on the shelf up there. Thought these were cool. Uh, Alien movie just came out, so Alien stuff is hot. But I found my complete set of five uh, Space Marines. So there's um, this guy's name. There's Drake. Still in the package. Corporal Hicks. 
Ripley, Sergeant Apone, and last we've got Bishop with the big ass Gatlin gun. Now, if you guys are interested in those, uh, they are for sale or for trade if I have them still by the time you're seeing this video. So I'm not attached to them. I just loved Alien and Predator stuff when I was a kid. So I ended up buying them at KB or whatever. This is actually really cool. I remember buying this at a Bexley community, not a Bexley community sale, a Gehanna community sale back in the day. Um, and this was like, it was five bucks. But back then I thought it was cool. It's the DC Comics Superhero Collector's Case. And what makes this awesome is that it still has, uh, there's actually two inserts in there. And they're in pretty good shape. So not an expensive item here, like 15 bucks maybe, but uh, definitely cool. It's got, you know, Batman and all the DC main characters on there that back in the day that they used to sell all their stuff. All right, so I, I actually remember buying this too. This was a Gehanna... Uh, community sale, same same with the rest of this stuff here. Uh, back in, God, this was like 92, 93, or 94. And uh, I was really huge into action figures and stuff back then. And when I saw it, I actually really couldn't even believe that it was still there. Uh, but uh, I think I paid $2 for this. Don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure I paid 2 bucks. It is a Marvel uh, Superhero Secret Wars Freedom Fighter playset. Still factory sealed. And uh, I always like the back art on these. Just amazing. But this happens to be from 1984. So, Secret Wars, Freedom Fighter, playset from 1984. Really great shape. Again, if you're interested in that, looks like th those go between 100 and 130 on eBay. So, I guess we'd start there and make a deal. Um, when I saw this, I actually couldn't even believe that it was still in the box. Uh, I'd lost track of this thing a long time ago. I knew I had it, but I just could never find it. Um, and I remember, again, this is the same sale back in the early 90s. I paid 50 cents for this. I remember paying 50 cents for this because there were three other ones. Uh, no, there were two other ones. There were three total. My brother wanted two, and I wanted one. And uh, she said 50 cents each. My brother didn't have any money, so I gave her like $1.50 or 2 bucks, you know, whatever. And uh, we walked away with these, but... It's Skeletor from the He-Man Masters of the Universe series. Choo! Just sneezed. So I put that in front so I wouldn't wouldn't be seen on camera sneezing. But uh, yeah, Skeletor from 1982. I don't know if that's going to focus. Does have some uh, some major box damage here. It's folded uh, here. I think they, they folded it or whatever uh, to get it in the box. When they stored them at home and if you look at the back of it you can kind of see some warping um, around where the figure you know is laying on it or something was laying on it but uh, there's no there's no actual breaks in the cardboard which is good and this is you know star wars you got your 12 backs and your 21 backs this is a uh, 12 back and this is the, the skeletor with uh, it's not going to show up because of the yellowing of the the plastic but it's the uh, the black pants version so Somebody's trying to sell one of these on eBay right now for 550 bucks. Obviously, it's in a lot better condition. And uh, two sold for like 300 ish in about the same condition, maybe a little bit better. So I'll throw that up on Craigslist and see if anybody wants it. Any of you hardcore Masters of the Universe fans that uh, can't live without a sealed Skeletor, let me know. Um, I'm sure we can work something out. I probably wouldn't ask 300 bucks for this um, in that condition. But I, I don't think... 220 is a bad starting point so guys I'm, I'm pretty excited about today well tomorrow really because uh, it's sunday but monday when thrift stores open we are going to be there so wish us luck and we'll be back with the pickups we'll we'll be back 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 with the pickups so stick around all right guys we are back at game on we're going to take a look in their sega saturn pile again we're going to buy all the 99 cent sega saturn games that uh, aren't sports games and maybe we'll buy a few sports games so let's go on inside Woo -hoo!
okay, we are back, guys. Um, didn't go crazy. Uh, we had an opportunity to go a little crazy, but we didn't go crazy. Uh, so the first thing that we sort of did this week is uh, I went back to Game On, the game store that I did the tour of. Um, I know they got an amazing PlayStation collection. I sold some He-Man stuff, uh, so I decided to go down there and see if I could find a game uh, and kind of spoil myself a little bit, something I normally wouldn't come out of pocket for. And you will see that in the year of the PlayStation episode along with a very, very awesome uh, PlayStation long box game. So I'm in there and I'm chatting it up, having a good time, being the king of the ring, you know, walking around, talking to people, hanging out, you know, taking pictures, kissing babies, signing autographs, you know, which is an everyday thing for me. And I go out to my car. It's like 150 degrees outside. Womp, womp, womp. Flat tire. Had a nail embedded in my tire and uh, deflated while I was in the, uh, in the store. So I'm like, crap. So I put everything in the car. I go to get the donut out of the back of the car. And uh, of course that has been neglected since we bought the car. We don't check to see if it's got air. That one was flat too. And uh, so luckily there was like a gas station. So whenever the gas station, I was like dripping sweat. Like I came out of the shower and the lady, like I said, it was hot, took pity on me. She was like, don't pay for the air. I'll just turn on the air compressor from the inside of the store, which I didn't even know that they could do that. But that was awesome of her. And I take the tire back over, peel off the lug nuts, put the tire on. You know, now I'm like black with soot and brake dust and concrete and asphalt and rocks, you know, from the face down. So we had to pretty much call it a day uh, on that day. I had to get home. But we did go out thrifting. I guess that's today as you're seeing this it's like two days past that so it was like the next day after that and uh yeah okay so we'll just get with the small stuff and we'll kind of work our way up so it's not going to be an order uh, you guys know i'm a range instructor i do a lot of stuff on the range and you can always use a, a good pair of shooting glasses when you're on the range so we picked up for a dollar 99 uh these are made by silencio never heard of them Made by Silencio, but nice pair of range glasses so you don't shoot your eye out. Oh, yeah. Nice padded nose bridge there. So, yeah. Shooting glasses. We'll throw those in the old range bag. I got a couple pair in there, but you never know when they're going to break or somebody else needs one. All right. Very happy to uh, to find uh, this bad boy right here. $2.99. It is the uh, GameCube Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64 AV cable, and again, like I said, $2.99, which I don't have a problem paying $2.99 uh, for that cord, not at all, That, like, but now they're starting to price like Wii hookups for $2.99 each, Xbox hookups, PlayStation hookups, you know, all $2.99 each because they say the brand name on them, right, like Microsoft, Xbox, or Nintendo, so with these, you know, you're going to pick these up anytime that you can find them for, for cheap, but... Um, yeah, I really wish they'd go back to pricing those at $1.99 or 99 cents, which is what they used to be, you know, the last couple years. So they're starting to get wiser. Weisenheimer. Okay, so this stack of games I got uh, off of Brett Hamilton. We actually went out to Maxine's Bargain Box in Newark, one of my favorite stores. And uh, he was taking a bunch of trade in there. So I said, well, let me let me have first dibs. So we haven't actually worked out a dollar amount yet, but uh, I took the thing for the Xbox... Complete, very nice condition. Um, I have this on the PlayStation 2, and I actually might already own it on the Xbox as well. But um, yeah, we'll use this as a, like a giveaway sometime throughout the year. So we'll throw that in doubles bin. Uh, I just, it's crazy. I just sent Eric from Chasing the Classics like all my Genesis games that I didn't want to keep. But I think this was actually one of them Mickey Mania, The Timeless Adventures of Mickey Mouse. Um, I think I sent it to him loose cart, but we'll, we'll stick this up with the Genesis games post video, but it's just an amazing condition, which is why I kept it complete Genesis games in that good a condition. Heck yeah. And you know, it's not a, not a sports title. All right. So he also had three N64 games. I'm like, dude, I'll, I'll do something with those, man. I can find something for N64 games all day, every day. We got uh, Wipeout 64. Micro Machine 64. Now they're all in good shape. They just have sticker residue and stuff on them. Uh, that'll come off pretty easy. 
And then we've got Rayman 2, The Great Escape. And again, you know, not, not bad condition. Not great, but once those stickers come off, they'll shine right up. All right. So, okay. So I was at Goodwill, and uh, they had a copy of The Warriors on PlayStation 2. And when I saw it in, in the box, in their case, I was like, heck yeah, man. It's going to be a good day right here. Uh, no manual, and the disc looked like tight white used a chainsaw on it it kind of looked like that it was all messed up there was no coming back like the paint on top of the disc was like striped off you know what i mean it was that bad um if it was a couple loo loose light scratches or whatever um i would have picked it up and try at least tried to resurface it for three bucks but they had this game uh it was geometry wars galaxies for the nintendo ds i love that color man i love it it's got that sparkle to it it's kind of cool so if you're into geometry wars i'm not it kind of looks like an arena type shoot 'em up, which is cool. I've actually never even played it. I might, I might like it, but uh, it's super complete with the Club Nintendo stuff and the precautions manual. But yeah, that's really kind of cool, actually. Sparkly. So that was cool. Uh, right across the street, there's another thrift store. Kind of went in there. This was sort of an impulse purchase. Uh, it's not a bad price, but it's not the best price. Uh, for $5, we picked up Earthworm Jim for the Game Boy Advance, which is awesome. Focus. Earthworm Jim for the Game Boy Advance. Um, at that point of the day, it's like, okay, we've got some shooting glasses and we've got Geometry Wars. So at that point of the day, it was like, yeah, let's just pick this up just so we can have a little something something. But we'll find a home for that. And then I go, I go to Half Price Books. I always stop at like the Half Price Books. Um, and I always check, you know, what's in their bargain bin, their clearance bin. You never know. You might catch them slipping a little bit. Uh, for a dollar, you guys saw it in the video. Not the greatest title ever. It's a Super Dodgeball Advance. But it's an Atlas title. So to pick up an Atlas title on the Game Boy Advance for a dollar? Absolutely. I, I wouldn't pass that up at all. And if they had like two more of those, I probably would have bought the other two just to give them away or whatever. Make a million bucks on because Atlas titles are expensive, right? I'm just kidding. That's only like an $8, $8 game or so. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. So, Brett and I are out in Newark today. and We stopped by a Cashland Advance out there before we hit a couple game stores. And uh, they had the prices on the walls. It's like Xbox games. PlayStation 2 games are $2. Uh, PlayStation 3 or 360 and 360 games are 3 for $10. Wii games are $2.99. And then uh, Xbox One and PlayStation 4 games are $14.99. No problem. So I says, hey, how much are these Wii U games? And she says, the prices are on the wall. So I says... I read them. I read it out to her. Xbox One, PS4, fourteen ninety nine. Wii, two ninety nine. Three sixty. PS3, three for ten dollars. Xbox and PlayStation Two games, two dollars. So I said, "How much is this Wii U game?" She goes, "I don't know. It's probably just the same price as the Wii games." Okay, two ninety nine. No problem. Twi Zelda Twilight Princess HD for the Wii U. Uh, got it for two ninety nine. It was probably supposed to be like 10 bucks or 15 bucks, but hey, it's not what the wall, it's not what the wall said. The prices on the wall didn't even have Wii games on there. As far as I'm concerned, they're free. Uh, very nice condition. Uh, like I said, three bucks. I already put this up on, on offer up and a guy that I sell Wii U games to when I find them, like hit me up three seconds after I posted this on offer up and he's like, Hey man, uh, I want to get that uh, Zelda from you. And I said, no problem, man. I got it listed as 25. You buy games for me all the time. I'll do 20. And that's that's as good as I can go. And he goes, perfect. So 20 bucks, we'll get that out the door. And I don't mind, like, I don't mind giving people that I've already sold games to uh, a discount, you know, like that. I'm going to, I'm going to make some money on that. Not a big deal. And it keeps him coming back when I have games for sale. All right. So <laughs> I go to my offer up deal. It was like, four o'clock at night rush hour i'm driving there uh to pick up overwatch for playstation 4 for william he's been talking about it non-stop he's collecting the vinyl figures he uh let his playstation plus membership um expire so he couldn't play or whatever 
And uh, so for his birthday, which is coming up in July, end of July, depending on when you're seeing this, uh, we got him a three month to PlayStation, uh, the PlayStation whatever network, PlayStation Plus. Um, and then I'm, I'm buying this copy of Overwatch for 25 bucks. Now they're still selling at GameStop for like 45 ish. Um, so I'm getting a hell of a deal, uh, which is great. So I go down there, I meet these people. Very nice. They had a bunch of PlayStation 4 stuff that I, you know, Injustice 2 for like 45 bucks. I was like, no, nah, I'll just take the the Overwatch. Uh, so we made our, our offer up deal, and I knew there was a pawn shop right down the street. I hadn't been there in a while, but I knew they had games. And this is one of those weird places where like way in the back of the store, they've got like a stand-up uh, glass cabinet, you know, with the doors, the sliding doors. And they put all of their CD-based games in there. And then up front by the jewelry in the counter, they put all their cartridge-based games and like PS4 games and Xbox One games. So I go back there to see if there's anything rare for the PS3, you know, the uh, uh, PS2, you know, Wii, that kind of stuff. Didn't see any of their case but commons, and they're pretty expensive. They still want like $10 a game, uh, which is crazy. So I, I go over to the jewelry counter, and they've got like those jewelers. Uh, boxes, those jeweler shells that have like where you can put the rings in them. You know what I'm talking about? Well, they put DS games in them like that, like like the DS games like this. They kind of turn it and stick it in there so you can see it. And um, yeah, so I'm like, well, how much how much are these games here? Uh, they had a bag of Game Boy Advance games, and all I saw was this, like sticking out of you know a pile of these. So I knew that that was probably a good sign. So I said, how much are, are these games over here? And they're like, well, the Mario games are more, the Zelda games are more, uh, but, you know, the other games, you know, we could talk about it or whatever. Basically, all the dog shit titles are cheap, and they're going to charge you the Mario tax. No problem. So, just out of curiosity, I was like, hey, how much is Paper Mario for the 3DS? Loose. Um, yeah, that's $15. So, I whip out the phone, like, on eBay, I'm like... I can have it mailed to my door for 12 bucks, but I don't want to piss these people off. I said, okay, I'll pass on it. I've got it on the GameCube or whatever. I said, can I see that bag of uh, Game Boy Advance games? He's like, sure. So he pulls out the bag, puts it on the table. I promptly dump out all these Game Boy Advance games all over their glass counter. Uh, I'm talking to the guy. He's like, yeah, we don't even really deal with anything that old. That's just kind of stuff that we had that we put out. And I'm like, cool, you know. I said, I like the old stuff, man. I said, I just sold some He-Man stuff the other day. And then he was like, wow, He-Man stuff. I got a whole bunch of G.I. Joe, anything from the 80s I like to collect. Uh, he said, I just sold, like, all my G.I. Joe doubles. So, you know, my collection's still awesome. So, yeah, apparently he's got a pretty awesome G.I. Joe collection. So, again, built that instant rapport. So I said, well, how much are these, these games? He didn't even know what they were. He's like, what are these? I'm like, they're Game Boy Advance games. They kind of came out after the Game Boy, but before the DS. And he's like, oh, okay, um, f five bucks each. I'm like, perfect. So I go sifting through the bag. I'm like looking for extra titles that maybe I can throw in. Uh, so the first title we picked up, so I get to the register. Sorry. I get to the register and he goes, how about just $20 even? Because you know at pawn shops they can do like 18.67 cents. And then when they hit the, the, the enter button and it charges the tax, it's automatically like 20 bucks. Like they've figured out how to manipulate the tax. So I'm like, cool, man. Hey, I really appreciate it. I said, I'll stop back, check, uh, see if you got any games, you know, coming out in a couple weeks. He's like, cool, cool. Uh, but for 20 bucks, so like $4 each, not like $4 each, exactly $4 each, we picked up Mario Kart Super Circuit, which is a flipper. I'm going to flip that one. Label's, label's a little dinged up. It's got a nice little center punch right there, but... Again, it's a Mario Kart game. Amazingly enough, he didn't charge me the Mario tax on an older Mario game, but whatever. Not one, but two copies of Pokemon Fire Red. Uh, these are legit copies. Uh, the boards are legit. I haven't tested to see if they save yet. That's sort of my son's thing, so he'll tell me if they save. But yeah, Super Circuit, two copies of Fire Red. One copy of Pokemon Sapphire. And then last but not least, the creme de la creme. Whew, crazy. I knew something was up when I saw Natsume on the uh, on the cover here. Anytime I see a, a, Nat, a Natsume game, I always think Harvest Moon. And I think like that's probably a good game to get. Uh, but it's Car Battler Joe. Unbelievable. So while I was at the store, I was trying to do some research on this. 
And uh, I can only find complete copies on my eBay app. There's one for 175 then there's a bunch for like 230 250 260 you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I did find the last cartridge that sold was like $49.99. And then somebody has one with the manual that they want $59.99 for. And then somebody else has just the cartridge and they want $67 uh, for Car Battler Joe. Sort of a, like a vehicle combat RPG type game with Mode 7. Apparently it's really cool. Um, I don't know. I might pop it in, try it. But if anybody is interested in purchasing this game, let me know. I'll probably sell it to you cheap, like $3,000 or so, which is a deal. You know, I'll autograph the back, you know. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of The Pickups. Thanks for watching, and um, we'll see you on the next one. Car Battler Joe. $4.